All right guys, so I've been running on this XW Pro here for a couple weeks now, um, testing out all the features. I went off grid for a few days. Uh, we got a really cloudy weekend here in Vermont, so I had to turn, turn the grid back on. But I wanted to take a step back and show you how I wired this thing and kind of what was good about it, what was bad about it, what I should have done differently. Uh, and so let's, uh, let's dive into the wiring compartment and show you what's going on. Okay, well, first things first, let's go into the XW itself. Uh, so we have these six terminals right up here, and we have some ground lugs. And this is load, L1, L2, and neutral. We got grid in, L1, L2, and neutral we don't have to put in there. Um, and then in this one, we have generator in. So I've got some upcoming things I'm gonna be doing here, but um, I have the generator input is not actually really a generator, but it's gonna be something else. So when you're wiring this thing, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, at least in my opinion, is hook up these network cables here. These are the Zanbus cables um, and they get daisy chained all together. So you go uh, from the inside home over to the inverter, to the charge controller, to the battery monitor, uh, to any other devices you have. If you have an AGS, uh, you would go over to that. Um, and the reason for that is, if you can see right down in here, you have this little shield. I gotta be careful not to touch anything in here. You have this little shield um, and these all get hidden behind it. They go all the way around the back. There's little knockouts down in the bottom right and bottom left. Uh, and it's a real pain in the ass to get those shields on after the fact. So do that first. So the next thing I wired was the um, line in, line out, and generator. Um, so I have uh, three pieces of number four SER that I'm using. Uh, this is aluminum wire that I'm using, um, but you can use both copper and aluminum. Um, I used aluminum because it was cheaper, honestly. It was $2 a foot. Um, so, and, and I had, you know, probably close to 100 feet of it that I, that I needed for, for this project. So, um, we have grid in, load out, and uh, generator in. So, grid in comes right in here to these top terminals. Um, and this is the bypass here. So this allows you to bypass XW completely. Um, we have our grid in breaker and then our load out breaker over here. So the grid in, red goes back there, black goes over here. Then we have load out, that's red and black. And there are actually two terminals on there. We're only using one of them right now. Um, so you could add another load out if you needed to. Um, it does appear that these little bus bars here are set up so that you could add more terminals onto them. You see those little squares back there. Uh, you could add more terminals onto them if you needed to or wanted to. And then in the back here, we have our isolated neutral bar. We have our ground bar that's bonded to the frame. Um, there's another ground lug. You can't really see it, but it's hiding behind that uh, black battery cable there. And then tucked right up in there, right at the back, there are two more ground lugs. One of them's attached to the XW itself on the left side, and on the right side, it's attached to the frame of the, the mini PDP. I'm going to get the camera nice and close in here. So the next thing we got is this 250 amp breaker. So off the top of that, there's a red bus bar that goes over to this terminal right here. And that's the battery positive going into the inverter. Then there is a black bus bar that comes right down to that negative battery terminal that's right on the back of the uh, PDP, the mini PDP. Uh, then the positive battery cable comes into this bus bar over here. The negative obviously goes in there. Um, the two smaller wires that you see on there, those are going over to the charge controller. This is a 100 amp, uh, 600 volt charge controller. 
and you'll see that there's also a ZAN bus cable and this little terminator, and so that means that it's at the end of the line. Uh, you'll just want that at the end to prevent, uh, you know, I don't really know what it does. It's a, it's a ZAN bus terminator. So then we have the negative and positive PV wires coming in. I just have nine panels hooked up to this. And this is the negative and positive battery terminals. And get right down in here. You can see the, the ZAN bus cable is kind of hidden down there. Um, and so in between, see if, you, if I can get in here a little bit better. In between those two, I used chase nipples. So I used uh, two one inch chase nipples. And then underneath that little shield there is a three quarter inch chase nipple. And this actually lines up perfectly with the knockouts in the side of the uh, mini PDP. Um, kind of hard to get in there a little bit, but. Uh, so it just lines right up. So what I did was I, I knocked those out. I put the, uh, the chase nipples in and then I screwed this thing to the wall. That way everything was lined up perfectly. So this is the charge controller breaker, 125 amp. Um, you can't really see it, but on the back of it, there is a little crimped on ring terminal. Um, and there's another one on the top as well. So, um, the power for that jumps over from this, uh, bus here into the breaker, out the top of the breaker and over to the charge controller. Now the negative just comes right off of there and goes to the charge controller. As far as knockouts goes, you have a two inch, you have an inch and a half. I think this, these will do like inch and a quarter, inch and a half and two inch. And that's inch and a quarter and inch and a half. This one's inch and a quarter, inch and a half. And then there's three one inchers over there. Then in the right side and left side, there's another three that go uh, from three quarter to one inch on either side. And then right down at the bottom is three quarter. Uh, I think that'll do half and three quarter. And same on the other side, it'll do half and three quarter. And that's for the network cable. So overall, it's a really good size. You know, it's, uh, you know, you can fit uh, four breakers here. But the, the amount of room that you have in here to, to move around to get your hands in there to, to bend wires is really good. You know, I've worked in a lot of different, uh, you know, panels, load centers, whatnot, um, you know, comparing it specifically to like Outback or Solark or anything else. Um, you know, Solark is, they have a well-designed panel, so everything can kind of come straight in. Outback, uh, not as much. Um, they, they're, they're, uh, I, I don't know the exact part numbers. The GSLC, I think, is one of them. For, that's for the Radian inverter. Uh, that just gets so tight. I mean, it's, it's probably like two-thirds the size of this, and they try to do a lot more with it. And it just gets so tight in there. By the time you're done, you, you can't do anything. You can barely get the cover back on. Um, same in the charge controller, you know, there's just a ton of room and you can bring up to three strings into here um, But uh, there, there's just a ton of room uh, So good job on that Schneider if you look inside the uh, The XW as well Not a lot of room, but you really don't need it You know, it's it's the same like with the Solark where everything just kind of comes in and goes straight into its terminals The battery cables, you know in here at least they go straight into their terminals um, you know, so, so you don't really need a lot of room there. Um, and I understand why they didn't put it in. One other thing I would mention is over here on the right side, you have your auxiliary, uh, ports. That's for, uh, turning on and off different things with your auxiliary relays. You have your two ZAN bus ports. Um, and then on the left side there, you have your sync cables. Um, that's if you're doing inverters in parallel. Uh, you'll put a, a network cable in between the two inverters and that allows them to be on the same, uh, you know, at the same point in the frequency. It allows them to sync up. Um, there is also a battery temperature sensor in there uh, that uh, I'm not using for my lithium battery here. 
All right, guys, well, that's all I got for you today. Uh, if you do have any specific questions or things you want me to get into with this, let me know. Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm testing this thing right now, uh, but I can get into any part of it I need to. Uh, so definitely let me know in the comments, uh, and please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, uh, and I'll see you on the next one.